Not long ago, a J-10C fighter jet was found to be carrying at least one PL-17 ultra-long-range air-to-air -air missile during a round-the-clock red and blue confrontation drill by a brigade of the Aviation Corps in China's Southern Theater of Operations. Bulgarian military believes that compared to the J-16 and other twin-engine heavy fighters, which are mainly responsible for air control tasks, the J-10C, a single-engine multi-purpose fighter mainly used for short- and medium-range operations, has a limited payload capacity, so the pairing with the PL-17 is surprising, but it also signals that the PLA may change the definition and mode of air combat in the future. The PL-17 is an over-the-horizon fighter. The PL-17 is an over-the-horizon active radar guided air-to-air -air missile, often referred to as an ultra-long-range air-to-air missile, which can first be confirmed to have appeared in 2016 and is generally believed to have a range of more than 400 kilometers. With long range also comes large size, as the roughly 6 meter length and 500 kilograms weight has been considered a unique weapon for the PLAS twin-engined heavies such as the J-16 or J-20, but now it looks like maybe things aren't that simple. The main reason why it's surprising is that for an ultra-long-range air-to-air missile like the PL-17, being able to mount it is only the first step, the biggest difficulty lies in how to use it to hit a target accurately from hundreds of kilometers away. To achieve this, the first requirement is that the airborne radar is at least able to detect and lock onto the target under the guidance and direction of the AWACS and obtain real-time data from the AWACS, reconnaissance planes and satellites through the data chain, and wait until the missile is launched before a series of procedures are officially put into operation. First, the missile's dominant radar guide must be able to track and lock onto the target at all times, while other sensors collect data on the external environment, such as altitude, speed, temperature and humidity, as well as the relative distance to the target. At the same time, the missile is also from the carrier aircraft. Early warning aircraft or satellites continue to receive new target information and data after the control algorithms of the integrated integration calculation to ensure that the missile can always lock on the target. The whole process may be completed in the context of enemy electromagnetic interference, which is equivalent to a further increase in the carrier radar and electronic warfare capabilities of the performance requirements. Bulgarian military believes that due to the complexity of this process, J-10C active electronically scanned phased array radar and other airborne equipment, it is difficult to support the PL-17 to play the best performance. This is not to say that the technical conditions of the J-10C is not good, but the single-engine medium-sized aircraft and the load than the double-engine heavy aircraft naturally worse. This is not to say that the J-10C is not technically capable, but the single-engine medium-sized aircraft is naturally worse than the twin-engine heavy aircraft in terms of load. For example, the J-16 and J-11 series may be able to hang two pl 17 S along with 2PL-15S and 2PL-10S, perhaps with electronic warfare pods or sub-tanks, whereas the J-10C, in order to ensure basic maneuverability, may only be able to hang 2PL-10S, and sub-tanks and pods and the like may not need to be considered. Because of this, it seems surprising, and Bulgarian military says that if the PLA succeeds in integrating the PL-17 into the J-10C, it will be a significant technological leap. The subtext, I'm afraid, is not so explicit, because if the PL-17 can be separated from the need for high-performance radar and equipment, it means that it can be deployed on more airborne platforms, such as high-altitude, long-endurance unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, near-space vehicles, or other hypersonic vehicles. If the PL-17 is indeed, as many foreign media speculate, specifically designed by the PLA to eliminate enemy AWACS, refueling planes, reconnaissance planes, and other high-value aerial targets. Then the threats that these targets will have to face could come from all directions. So how is it not a redefinition of air warfare? In addition, Bulgarian military believes that this is a signal to the United States, Japan, India, and other countries to prove to these countries that the Chinese Air Force's aggressiveness, flexibility, and multidomain are constantly being enhanced. For example, if a direct conflict breaks out between the United States and China in the Taiwan Strait, the PLA could use a much larger number of fighters 
to launch a long-range over-the-horizon attack, which could potentially establish air superiority in the early stages of the conflict, thus determining the subsequent development of the battle and the final outcome. It remains to be seen whether this is what Bulgarian military believes to be the case. If we look at it from another angle, we will find that according to the Chinese habit of saving for a rainy day, it is only a matter of time before the J-10C develops the ability to mount and launch the PL-17, because theoretically speaking, any fighter may need to carry out long-range interception missions, and any fighter may become the last line of defense to defend the country's airspace, so naturally, it is necessary to expand and improve the combat capability as much as possible, and to eliminate the combat blind spot combat blind spots. Finally, this move is also to open up sales channels. After all, the J-10 series still has only one foreign user, the Pakistan Air Force. For many foreign air forces, J-10C export J-10C is not bad performance, political factors have not reached an insurmountable degree. The key is that many countries have been the US and Russian fighter users, over the years has spent a heavy amount of money to form a set of relatively complete training and maintenance system. If it is discarded to rebuild a system, not only is not easy to bear the economy, whether to ensure that the transition and reconstruction period of defense security is also a big problem. Therefore, without enough bargaining chips, it is not easy for some countries to make up their mind to buy J-10CE or Chinese-made Air Force combat system. The fact that J-10C can launch PL-17 is a very important bargaining chip, and there are not many air forces in the world that can reject the ultra-long-range air-to-air missiles. But of course it depends on the sincerity of the cooperation as to whether it can be introduced along with the J-10CE or not.